Hello again, welcome to another edition of the Real Air Guide, joined by Chris, Real Air 140. And conversely, uh, welcome to Real Air 140's channel with special guest, Real Air Guide. Fantastic, fantastic. Chris, um, I had a tweet from you this morning. I'm really excited by this. We've got an Evil Twin beer. What have we got? Uh, it's Evil Twin Brewing. It's P3. It's an IPA and it comes in at 7%. Look at that. Don't know if Ah, oh, there we go. P3, Evil Twin Brewing. Big fan of Evil Twin Brewing Company. 7%, double IPA. Now, where do Evil Twin hail from? Are they Danish or...? I believe they're Danish. Danish brewer. Okay. Uh, it says Pante. I don't think that's anything to do with pants. <laughs> I think that's just a recycling thing. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's a Danish person out there who'll be able to tell us something um, about that. It's brewed with Van, Malt, Humble and Hops. Danish. This is my Danish for the day. Mm. <laughs> Everyone should have some. Thank you. Very we do a on there. roll reversal with this one, is it? Yeah. Okay, beer pouring out. Lovely and clear. Yeah, I'm being quite aggressive, as is not my way, but Simon's way. There we go. Yeah. Get a sense there of what that's like. So it's hazy. Mm. A few bits and bobs trotting around in there. The light is awful today, so you'll have to. Yeah, sorry bit for that. A, bit, of a, bit of a struggle with the lighting, but it's a, it's a dark summer's British day again. Yeah, two finger head. Yeah, two finger head. Slight haze, but that might be to do with the. Uh, we've cooled these beers down a little right bit. Right then, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's still a lovely looking IPA. Yeah. I tell you what, it does look. It looks strikingly drinkable. Yes. And I've got a bit of a thirst on. Yeah, this, yeah. This could be dangerous. It's seven percent, so um, uh, not not one to be trifled with. I don't no, think. No. Um, Should we get our noses in? Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Bit of grapefruit. A tangy kind of orange. Pininess. Yeah. Yeah. I think the proof in the pudding with this. Beer will be in the taste of it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All Let's right. Dig in. Thank you, Chris. Chin -chin. Cheers, everybody. Wow. Very aggressive bubbles on that. Mm. It's a bit of a um, it's a bit of a kind of a slow boil. A slow boil, but it most definitely it's a slow kind of bitterness build, but it definitely builds up to a lovely bitterness. It's a, it's a very, like you're chewing on orange peel, mm. kind of bitterness. You know, somebody's giving an orange and you've got, no, no, throw away that bit in the middle. I want the bit on the outside. Yeah. I'm going to eat that. Yeah, it's it's full on kind of, yeah, orange peel. Um, with the burp there, an aggressive kind of carbonated beer. Mm. Oh yeah, to begin with. I'm going to go again. Oh yeah, as you try and swill it around your mouth. It actually stings a little bit. It's that aggressively carbonated. But it does really kind of shove around that that really kind of orange peel flavour. The pine is kind of secondary, I think. I'm picking up a sweet malt, a balance. It, it's a balanced IPA, isn't it? Mm. It's very... As I'm speaking now, I probably took a sip 10, 15 seconds ago. It's very kind of hoppy, and, and bitter, but on the it's right at the back end, 15 seconds in. Yeah, it's yeah, grape fruity, citrusy, all the things you want from an, from an IPA. But it's a snow, it's, it's like you put some milk in a milk pan and you've let it kind of rise slowly mm. on your palate. It's not, it's that kind of some of them are bang in your face, and they bomb, 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 and you've got to kind of work out what's going on in your mind. And and, and doing the same thing now, so I've, I've taken a break from having to sit there and I've just had a thought what I'm going to speak in. And, I'm, I'm picking up a kind of a, almost like a lime, lime yeah. pickle, almost like a lime pickle thing. It's almost like a spiciness. To yeah, it. yeah, really, really tasty. Talking about lime pickles and kind of curries, um, this beer I'm probably going to save some of this. Chris has been cooking away a curry just behind me here all day long. Mm. Um, this would go fantastic with that kind of chicken. It's a chicken curry. It's a, it's a well, technically it's a Mexican stew. Close enough though. Mm. Um, it'll go with it because it, it will really ping through the because um, there's a big tomato base in there. It's going right. to cut through that acidity. It's, it's, it's going to 
yeah, it's going to wash away those kind of the heat that's in there as well because there's a little chipotle in there. This, this is going to be good with that. It's going to complement it nicely. And it's that's what we're trying to say. There's more to these IPAs. Some of these IPAs, which I think this one would be, would be well suited to food. And we've just kind of said that it's it's a, it's a beer suited kind of beer. I think that that you know aggressive carbonation will help if you've got a big mouthful of chili and you want to wish it away. Where right, milk's going to be your, your your best bet to take away any excess heat that you're not keen on. But actually, beer comes just after milk in terms of how good it is in terms of removing heat. And this carbonation would help. It's going to help bubble away away all of the capsule. Is it capsicum or capsicum? Yeah, you know, whatever it is that causes the chili heat in your mouth, the bubbles will force that away. So anyway, the mouthfeel. Mouthfeel. Mm. It's a medium for me. Mouthfeel. It's not so. It has got that aspect of an American. IPA where it's thick and gloopy, but not so much. No, and you know, we've chilled this, not massively, but I think if this was one of the big American IPAs, you know, the, some of the bigger, uh, uh, Torpedo for example, something like that, double IPA there, um, you, you pick up that stickiness, that pininess, along with the orange sap. This doesn't come with that kind of endless sticky kind of, mm. like you're speaking Welsh, you know, that, <laughs> that, that, kind, that, that kind of thing. Yeah, this is a bit cleaner. It's kind of it's kind of a second cousin between, you know, if there was a cousin that was related to both English IPAs and English American style IPAs and American American IPAs. Mm. It's kind of sits somewhere in the middle of that family. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, one last look, one last kind of wash around with the beer. I love the way the beer looks in the glass. Mm. I like the flavour, I like the mouthfeel. Um, rating from you, Chris? It's a, it's a tasty beer for 7%. Would I enjoy really having a blast in it? Can I ask before you give your rating, so mm. to jump in here, um, in terms of price as well, put it put it in terms of kind of what you pay mm. for it, is it worth buying again, you know, all, all the aspects of a, of a beer. Okay, these were, I think they were £5.50 each. So it's a £5.50 for a 3.30. That's the thing that brings it down for me. It makes it difficult to really rate it highly because I granted there's all kinds of import and export taxes you mm. know, to worry about, but do you know what? I can get a better beer than this from an English brewer from just down the road and it will be a, a third of the price. And I sensed that all the way through the review. Mm. I sensed it from you all the way through the review. That's why I asked mm. at the end. I it's sense, not disappointing. Yeah. yeah. It's very good. It's very well made. Mm. But there's no need. There's no need to import all the way from Denmark mm. if you can get it better from 30 miles away. Mm. So, out of 10? Out of 10, it's an 8. You know, it's, it's, mm. it's not a mega score. It's, it's a good beer, it's well made, it's well balanced. Mm. There's a nice dry, dry, hoppy, malty kind of thing going on with it. I've had better. And it's cheaper to get the stuff from America. Yeah. You want a proper mm. American IPA? Get an American IPA. You know, this, this weird second cousin thing that I said about earlier? It's not a second cousin you want to know. It's kind of the second cousin who might be a paedophile or something like that. <laughs> you don't want to hang around with it. You know, he's bloody weird. You know? That kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, this, this beer is the paedophile of beers. The evil twin. Says all. So a 7 out of 10. Uh, uh, 8, eight, out, eight, eight out, out of 10, ten for you. I, I'm going to join you on an 8 out of 10. It's very rare we kind of deviate too much from our ratings because... I very much agree with what Chris is saying, Chris very much agrees with what I'm saying, we've got the same kind of palate. Um, I think I'll enjoy this really well with my tea, mm. uh, no doubt I'll ever try it with my tea because my wife will probably drink that, mm. um, but um, try it with a curry. But yeah, 8 out of 10, it, it's a pretty pretty decent beer, um, £5.50, might be a bit of a stretch, yeah. but it's what we're here to do, it's what, it's what we're here to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, by all means buy it. Try it, but yeah, but don't expect to be blown away. Buy it if you're in Denmark. <laughs> well, no, it's got four hundred pounds then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks for watching us. Um, Chris's channel, my channel, and cheers. I think we're gonna go that way. Yeah. <laughs> you.